I am a university student at San Diego State. My major is English because I would like to become a professor. Um, I would really like to publish poetry if possible. I do go to school. I go to school to be um, trying to be a writer. It's a very long process, not very prosperous, but I do, I do enjoy it very much. I like long walks on the beach. Sometimes, um, and I do. I drive a, I drive a Ford Escort 01. Doesn't go very fast, but it gets me from A to B. I used to watch a lot of TV. I used to really like Shark Tank. I don't know if anyone's seen that show, where it's like a bunch of investors investing in products. Sometimes the investments are really, really stupid. But I used to love watching it for stuff like that. When I was younger, I would always watch Disney movies, whether it be. Um, Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty, which is my favorite movie, and The Hunchback of Notre Dame. So I just got done doing this interview for a student who applied to Yale, and one of the questions they asked me during the process was, like, why are you interviewing and do you have any advice for someone going off to college and anything in that sort? So I guess the answer to the first question was just, it's, I remember what it was like being in that position and, you know, wishing like I wish I had someone gave me the advice I could have for other people back when I was applying and so I think it's really, really, a really cool way to give back to the community for an experience you're thankful for. I was kind of at an aimless point in uh, college just taking basic general education courses and my plan initially was to do something with business just for the sake of okay, it seems like a secure fallback plan or, you know, this would please my parents, but it, one, once I realized how much mathematics was involved, it that just went right out the window. So I thought, you know, what the hell, and I gave it a shot. What's up? You're not gonna believe the shit I just heard. I have some exquisite tea. Ooh, spill the tea. Okay, you know that girl, Connie? Yeah, the uh, messy bitch. Yeah, that stage five hurricane of a mess. Mm-hmm. Well, I just found out the bitch got fired from her job at Wabogs. No. Yeah, she got fired just after a few months of working there. Well, I shouldn't be surprised. Her ass was always late to work. Oh my god, really? Yeah, one time I was driving to her wall box and I saw her driving like she was in Tokyo Drift. Ho cut me off twice. <gasps> that bitch! Yeah, I know, right? So anyways, I'm in wall box and I see her panicking in her aisles. And I ask her what's wrong and she tells me, This is the ninth time I've been late to work this month. And my boss is mad at me. Nine times? Connie lives close to wall box. How the fuck is she always late? Girl, I don't know. She's just 50 shades of wrong. So, uh, did she get fired for being late all the time? <laughs> she wishes. It's much worse than that. Worse? Oh god, what did she do? Some really dumb shit. First off, the bitch got caught shopping on the clock. What? Yeah, and that's not all. Uh-huh. So, while she was shopping on the clock, a customer goes up to her and asks her for help. Okay. And she gets into a fight with this customer, talking about how she can't help her because she's on break, but she really isn't. Oh, God. Yeah, so the argument gets hella bad, and the customer threatens to call the cops on Connie for being hostile. Fuck. Yeah, and, like, this causes Connie to go ballistic. And right when the customer reaches for her phone, Connie punches her. Oh, no, she didn't. She did! Like, oh my god, it was so bad! Like, the customer was, like, all passed out on the floor. So, like, the cops get called, and Connie gets arrested for assault. Last I heard, she's going to trial soon. Wow. I know. <sighs> Never changed, Connie. Yeah. And you know what else happened? What's up, guys? My name is June. I'll open this up by admitting that, yeah, I am really, really hyper, but I promise you, I promise you that I'm also a whole lot of fun. I'm looking for a man to hate everything with me. Also, the reason I'm on this site is because my mom said that she would disown me if I didn't get a husband, but 
I am open to ladies because I am very heteroflexible. Fuck you and your gender construct. Greetings there. I'm Matt, and I'm a young man looking for my true and honest sweetheart. I'm very sex positive, and I respect a woman's body to the utmost fullest. Because, after all, your body is a wonderland. I consider myself to be a refined gentleman, so I'm not really into the macho thing. Hi, I'm Val. I'm a young woman in my prime looking for love. I'm a gossip columnist at a celebrity magazine, and I basically spill tea 24-7 on messy stars. I'm basically living, breathing gossip girl. But better, I'm sure. And I'm looking for a man that's tall in height and tall in the pants, if you know what I mean. I'm interested in finding that once-in-a-lifetime partner that I can cherish eternally. Uh, I'm looking for someone who's both spontaneous and thrilling in spirit. Someone who one second just wants to go and take a nice trip to the river, and the next second wants to burn down the house and start anew. Yo, what it do? It's your boy, Jesse G. I'm looking for a girl who is crazy stupid thick. I need a freaking bitch who hops on my whoop. I'll be hustling, swagging, and stacking up money. I'll be on some new shit, fly like a rocket. Oh, dead ass. I'll be reflecting so hard they call me a flex offender. Whoa. So, um, hit me up if you uh, want to have a baby. Word. I would consider myself a sapiosexual. Um, it's just really hard to find someone who's just intellectually stimulating and who doesn't play games and who knows how to treat a woman right. Because I am a strong, independent, feminist woman and I deserve respect. And I'm really spiritual. Um, I've been super into self-care lately and it's just been, it's been so great. Um, whenever I feel stressed out, I just, I find my center and Hello, meditate. my name is Isabel Rahal and I'm 18 years old. Don't question it. I am looking for a person of color and if you don't like my preferences, then you are deemed as a racist. I'm all for equal rights and I will not stand being oppressed. I'm very smart when it comes to politics. And I went every political argument that is hurled at What's up, me. guys? My name is... My name is Cesar Calera, and I've been collecting shoes for roughly about 10 years now. I started collecting shoes around the end of junior high, beginning of high school, so ninth grade. In ninth grade, there was like this one kid that was very much obviously into streetwear and sneakers, and he had on, I didn't know at the time, it was uh, the Nike SBs, it was, it's uh, Nike skateboarding shoes, and he had on these purple blazer SBs that I was just completely infatuated with, and that was kind of the shoe that really got me interested and like piqued my interest in like okay I need to know like you know the places where he gets these shoes and uh, this is the shoe right here uh, the nickname for them is called the purple rains they're I'm not to this day I'm not sure if it was inspired by the Prince album of the same name but uh, yeah they're uh, all purple suede and the the swoosh itself has a snakeskin texture on it and yeah this was this was the beginning of it I own 115 pairs of shoes. As far as how often I make purchases, it's pretty sporadic to be honest. Uh, sometimes I can go weeks, perhaps even months sometimes without making a purchase. And there'll be some times where I'll purchase, you know, two to three pairs in one week alone. I buy my shoes usually from online retailers of physical locations. Besides from that, you know, it's always just keeping my eye on places like eBay or Grailed. You always want to have something that, you know, the next 30 guys don't have. Like something that places you separate from the rest of everyone else. Um, some people might call it either selfish or maybe it's just an ego or a pride thing, but you always kind of want to, I don't know how to put this, you always want to be able to 
have someone look at you and kind of wonder to themselves like where do they get that and that might seem a little strange but the fact of the matter is one of the best compliments someone into sneakers can get is someone asking you where'd you get those So like, oh my god, I think I finally found some potential USDA prime man meat for me to sink my teeth into. He's a little different from what I usually go for. Kinda eccentric. But like, it's totes alright because he's tall and has like chest hair. Plus, I found out Davis can cook like Gordon Ramsay and I'm like so down for a home cooked meal. Getting ready for a date is never a challenge for me because I just have a knack for style. My policy is that I always have to dress to get paid and laid. After all, presentation is everything. When I prepare for a night of romance and potential sexual intercourse, I like to make sure I cover all my grounds. First, I make sure my hair is impeccably groomed, like my lord and savior, Patrick Bateman. Praise be unto him. I am also diligent to assemble the perfect ensemble of menswear. Before that, I undergo a strict exercise regimen to maintain my vitality and chiseled physique. My previous sexual partners have gone so far as to compare my body to a young Ralph Macchio. I can't wait to surprise Val with my culinary expertise. I got a mean classic from my homeland that I've been dying to prepare. What the fuck is this? my country, this is a very cherished dish. And just, where might that be? Philadelphia. Philadelphia's not a country. Oh my god, tonight was a fucking tragedy. I literally have PTSD. You know, you shouldn't compare your experience to actual PTSD. That joke isn't funny anymore. She seemed like she just wasn't engaging. She sounds kind of like a cunt. Like the type to read books and not even the ones with pictures. You should have seen the dinner he made me. That meat looked like murder. <laughs> I'm still ill. I just can't bring myself to associate with such a neophyte. Neophyte? Is that on console or PC? I'll play that. You know, June, 
You certainly seem like the type of person who would manage to get hit by a parked car. You're only saying that because you didn't get to park your car in her garage. Love is just a miserable lie. Well, Val, this night has opened my eyes, and stop me if you think that you've heard this one before, but these things take time. 